You're listening to WCAT Radio, your home for authentic Catholic programming. Welcome to WCAT TV Radio. I'm Kiki Latimer, and I'm your host for the Catholic Bookworm. And I'm here, well, I'm in Rhode Island, but um, my guest today, Stephen Thomas, is in Chicago at the Catholic Writers Guild. I wish I was Mm -hmm. there as well. Um, So I've been interviewing a number of authors today. Uh, usually I get to read the books before I do interviews, so this is this is new for me as well, um, to sort of do blind interviews, but it's been great. Um, so Stephen Thomas has written a series called, or is working on Catholic Joe Superhero for adults. It's an adults book, which is cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a superhero. And um, so how about you start us off with a prayer to get us sure. started? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. We say, come Holy Spirit, fill our hearts. Help us to hear what we need to hear, to speak what we need to speak. And we thank you in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you wound up writing this book. (laughs) Good, yeah. So so I am married to my beautiful wife, Ginny, and we've got eight living children. And... uh, our oldest is with the CFRs, and we, um, again, we've got a, a family that loves our Catholic faith and just very blessed. Uh, I've, I've worked in a lot of different areas, um, taught high school. I First, I was in seminary for five years. After that, I taught high school for a couple of years, and then I realized I wanted to have a big family, so I had to get out of Catholic school teaching. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, after that I, I did cabinet design. Um, so any, any type of high end, like woodwork or anything like that, I, uh, I was a designer, did, did pretty well with that. Then the housing market crash came in 2008 and I moved into corporate insurance, uh, hated that. Um, but, le- but learned a lot. God always teaches us through suffering, right? So, uh, learned a lot there. And then after uh, insurance, I went into software, did some software development, created a couple of different software products. Um, it actually started a company called Vitae Corporation in uh, 1991. It was uh, a culture of life credit card and long distance. We were going to start a culture of life bank. And then we, we were, we were uh, banned back when banning wasn't cool um, <laughs> for being so pro-life. And then uh, I started a company in 2007 called Faith and Family Flicks. Uh, did that when I went on to Netflix and saw a bunch of different genres I wasn't particularly fond of. So I thought we've got to create something that a Catholic family can go to. And so I started that. So I've been always been an entrepreneur, always started new things. And then uh, really the, um, so the book, so let me take you back. So going back probably about 18 years, I was saying a little prayer to our Blessed Mother. I go, Mother, I go, What's something we could do just for your son? And the whole idea of a Eucharistic, National Eucharistic procession was like powerful, given to me. And so I I tried unsuccessfully to get it going. And then when they announced the year of Eucharistic revival, I um, reached out to Bishop Cousins. And long story short, um, they decided that they were going to do a National Eucharistic, they call it pilgrimage. I wanted to call it a march uh, because we're taking Jesus out in battle. We're You know, we're going out to like, you know, vanquish the evil and, you know, reclaim, reconsecrate our country to, for Jesus Christ. And so, um, and so it was after it was, so when I was, I was going to be leading that and then eventually they kind of pushed me out and brought somebody else in. So a a small group of us guys, we decided to walk with the relic of the true cross in the form of a cross across the country and in really in preparation for Jesus, you know, for our Eucharistic Jesus, and also praying for our country and for our, for marriage and for our world um, and our church. And so it was from that, after I finished that pilgrimage, that um, God gave me the grace really to write the book. And so it was after that. Um, and again, some some days, every like every step was just agony. And so where did you uh, walk from and to? So we walked, um, we were walking from Marian Shrine. So I walked from the Shrine of the, the Immaculate Conception to the Grotto at Notre Dame. So that was about 650 miles. We walked through the Appalachian Mountains. And um, it, wow. yeah, like how I said, uh, how many of that? you did this? How many of you did this? Um, over, so it was over probably about a seven month period. It was about 12 guys. So the, the 12 apostles, right? Okay. Now we, uh, but we took turns and I, my leg was the East Coast. 
And then I did a little bit of the South because they didn't have somebody for a short time there. So I walked for about a month and really it was kind of through all of that agony and, you know, and prayer that uh, got, like I said, God gave me, I think he gave me the grace to actually write the book that I've been wanting to write for decades. So. Oh, so the book had been in your head for a while. Yes. Okay. Could you hold the book up for our viewers here? Sure. Just hang on to it there. Sure. Catholic, Catholic Joe, Joe superhero. Yep, and and the superheroes a little bit too close to my name because people think I'm being like egotistical, <laughs> like I'm the superhero. I'm like, no, no, that's that's so far from the truth. Superhero Stephen Thomas. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, maybe you are the superhero and you just don't know it. <laughs> Well, we're all, you know, and that's the thing, you know what? So my, my big thing when I, when I give talks, so I'll give talks to different men's group groups is that, is we're all by the merit of our baptism, you know, we are, people don't realize the dignity that we receive when we're baptized and that we are made priest, prophet, and king, and that we're grafted into God's family. And the thing is, is that we are all called to be superheroes. And again, I may not be able to pick up a bus and throw it you know, but I can, but I can lift up a soul and, and help bring that soul to the father. And that, and to me, there, there's nothing more super heroic than being able to help a soul um, become closer to God or, or to make it to heaven. And you have a big family. You have eight children. How exciting. How yeah. old are oh, they? Yeah. Uh, so the oldest is 32 and the youngest is 21. So we had five boys and then we had three girls after that. And my wife, my wife cried like a baby when we had our first girl. She didn't think it was possible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Well, I have 13 grandchildren and we, we had one girl and now we have a second girl and 11 boys. So, uh, oh, wow. yeah, we were starting to feel like, are there any girls? You know, we <laughs> keep having boys. Um, but my daughter, who has five children, just had her first girl. Um, she oh, has four boys her. and finally had that girl. And yeah, it was the same thing. Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> you have to be yeah, just wow. so ecstatic having all those grandkids <laughs> around you. Yeah. It's really funny. You know, we're living in this culture that tells us there's no difference, you know, between boys and girls, but it's oh. really. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. You haven't been around our family because it's a, there's a huge difference. You haven't been around reality. If you think yeah, that. Right. <laughs> right. So tell us about your book. Um, like I said, normally um, I would have read your book and I would have all sorts yeah, of you didn't write you didn't read it? Oh my goodness. No. no. Um, yeah. You're a speed reader, I right? Might. No, actually <laughs> So it you know, um so I wrote the book for a multitude of reasons. Um uh, one of the reasons was a severe need for therapy. Um so this was like just coming off of uh COVID <laughs> and all and all the you, you just mentioned it, all the nonsense that's going on in our culture. I'm like, this is insanity. And so what I did is I, you know, a fictional book, you can create your own reality, right? So all the things that I was just disgusted in in life, I created different outcomes. So it was, it was kind of a therapeutic thing, but also um, I would say mainly it was written and I wrote it specifically for men. Um, but I have to tell you that women love it. And, and it just, it shocked me because I asked them, I said, you know, I wrote this for men. Why do you like it? And they they said, because it shows such a beautiful masculinity. Um, it shows a true masculinity. And I think it's something that really is attractive to women. So I wrote this really to give hope, but also to ignite. I used to say to encourage, but encourage was not a strong enough word. Um, it was written to ignite, um, ignite men and, and women, really to ignite them, to ignite their hearts, to realize that um, you know, there's a tagline here. It says, what can one says, what can one man possibly do? And that isn't a question. That is a that is a challenge. Just like Jesus said in the in the gospel, he said, When the Son of Man comes again, will he find faith on the earth? I don't think that's a question. I think that's a challenge. And so this the same thing with this is that it's meant to be a challenge. And I really wrote the book really to engage and to ignite um people. Um, to realize that we all have a part to play. We all have, again, we're all called to be superheroes by the merit of the graces that God gives us. Um, so that was probably the primary reason that I wrote it was really just to give encouragement, to give hope, um, and to really to ignite people. Um, it kind of reminds you know, me when so you said that of that the old movie, It's a Wonderful Life. 
you know, what yeah. can one person do? Sometimes yeah. we underestimate what our role in life is very often. Well, that's, yeah. And, and just to give you an example, so my, so my, I would say my conversion, I've always been Catholic, but my really, the thing that really ignited me was it was in high school and, and somebody had left a small little white booklet, Mother of Christ's Crusade. Again, a very simple, but it was about the story of Fatima. And if you think about that one little book that some lady, probably some lady left for somebody in this, again, this little smart aleck punk high school kid picked up this book and read it and it changed my life. And it was from that book that I've got now eight, you know, eight children. Um, I've written a book. I've had people, you know, I've had people just, you know, tell me they've come back to the faith after they read the book. So, I mean, just again, these small little things that we do can have just great ramifications. And so that's the, that's why I love, that's why I love writing is that you can scale your desire to bring God's kids back to him. You can scale it um, in ways that we can never fully imagine. So where did that give us some idea? Where does the book start? Who is Catholic Joe superhero at the beginning of the book? Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I should answer your question, shouldn't I? Um, so, <laughs> a little. So, I don't want any so, spoilers, but I'd like to just have a little yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. Of... Just, just, just answer the question, Steve. Uh, so Lieutenant General Joseph Salvatore, um, he was woke out of the military, a father of a large family. He's got eight kids, too. I, I'm just lazy writer. So I just kind of <laughs> like used the template of my life. But even though it has nothing to do with me. Um, and then I just changed the names of the kids after I was done writing the book. <laughs> um, so Lieutenant General Joseph Salvatore, um, gets woke out of the military, finds out that his younger, youngest brother, Vinny, um, is getting a divorce. He wants to get a divorce. And so the story starts with Joe. Again, he, he was, he was raised in a, just the most beautiful family where marriage family was everything. And so he couldn't, he couldn't comprehend how his brother who was raised in such a beautiful environment and atmosphere could even consider getting a divorce. So he flies out, you know, and like two good Italian brothers, they, they fight. And um, of course, Joe is one of the baddest men on the planet. And so he, you know, he easily subdues his brother. And, and by the end of it, they're kissing and hugging and telling each other they love each other. Um, but he fights. Um, it starts off with him fighting in particular, you know, um, for his brother's marriage. And he wants to find out how this happens. So he starts peeling the onion. He starts, you know, trying to find out how could, how could this happen? And so he starts individually and then he goes more universally into the church itself as a whole. And so the whole story, um, a major theme of the story is marriage. And, and that's, um, yeah. And he, he, you know, he, he fights for marriage. He is. Um, and, and one of the things with, with um, Lieutenant General Joseph Salvatore is he's somebody who is a winner and he's somebody that, goes on the offense. He's not, he doesn't play defense. He goes on the offense. And when he sees something, he gets after it. And so that's why it's something I think that will really engage people because, you know, a lot of times as Catholics, Kiki, we've, you know, we've been on our heels. We've been playing defense culturally for, for decades. And it's like, I think people want, they want some wins. They want somebody that, you know, that can be proud of the Catholic faith that can go out and fight for it. And, you know, and, and, you know, and kind of take on the structures of evil and so, um, and that's what this character does. He uh, he does it in a very dramatic way, uh, but a very human way as well. So where does your superhero Joe get his strength from? His um, Obviously, he's got virtues. Um, yeah, so, yes, yeah, so he's a very, first of all, he's, physically, he's a very strong person. He, he used to, you know, he was a spec ops. He taught uh, special operations all, across all the different um uh, forces of the the military. Um, he was not only physically strong, but but he, again, he was brought up with a very strong faith. Um, it was something that wasn't a cultural thing. It was something that was kind of in his DNA. Um, he you know he he just had a beautiful faith, and um, and really it was from his relationships that he has with other people. His obviously his connection with God and his own physical strength. Um, so he he uses all those to the. Uh, you know, to, uh, to serve the purposes of the book and me. Well, it sounds wonderful. Um, so he has a big family as well. Is Correct. he, 
is he with his family in the book or is he venturing out from that home place? So it kind of, it overlaps. So his, you know, one of the themes in the book too, is that, you know, he, again, as a soldier, um, you know, I point out that the family, really the family sacrifices just as much as the, as a soldier themselves. Um, so, but he does, you know, he, he always longs to be back, you know, on his porch with his wife, you know, um, you know, smoking a cigar with, you know, uh, with his family playing around him, um, but the family is a part of it. The first book really focuses on de the character development of, of Joseph Salvatore. There's other main characters too. There's a lot of like there's priests in there that are you know that, that where there's character development. Um, there's the uh, the antagonist um, who's a bishop. Um, and uh, yeah. but but I treat I treat the priests very well. They they're shown as strong and you know just um, again I've had some great uh, some great mentors in priests and. So, um, so again, I try to, I try to paint a picture and, and I, you know, I try not to beat people over the head with the faith, but I try to just weave it in as a natural part of natural part of their lives. Um, so, so he's yeah, so the, the second the sacraments, so What's he's that? connected. So Joe superhero is connected to the sacraments. Oh, for sure. Yeah. He, I mean, there's, I don't know how many chapters there are where he's in the confessional <laughs> saying father you know father i you know i screwed up again but you know um but that's the beauty of it is you know it shows his his, his fallibility um you know obviously we're all you know we're all you know um as a result of original sin we're all broken and have that weakness um so we you know i show that side of him as well as you know his strength so you're writing this partly to come up against the view of masculinity in our society today which, you know, sort of started with what the Bernstein Bears, <laughs> you know, dad is just yeah. kind of a stupid idiot. That's sort right. Of stuck yeah. Out of the family. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. So, we have no, I, yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's, it's meant to do, it's meant to do that, Kiki. It's meant to, you know, again, it was meant to really give men just a hope and just breathe life into who they're supposed to be, you know, as far as, um, you know, strong masculine leaders, but still compassionate, still, you know, it's, it, it's, um, it's like I said, it's, there's a, a beauty in the masculinity, just like there's the beauty in the femininity of his wife. Um, but it's, uh, yes, yeah, so it, it's, um, it's him, his family, other characters, and the next book will have a lot more, um, it, it'll be a lot more focused on his wife, um, and some of the other children and some of the other characters as well. Cool. So what did your wife think of the book? Oh, she loved it. And she, she it. And let me tell you something. My wife is brutally honest. She's not, you know, she's not like, oh, it's really nice. And she is like in your grill. If if she doesn't like it, she will say, you shouldn't write that. But she, you know, I, she had me read it to her. So I, I finish a chapter, I read it to her and, you know, and sometimes she's in tears and, um, and sometimes I'm like, I, I wrote a lot of it in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel. So I'm, I'm there with Jesus. I'm like asking him, okay, Jesus, how should we say this? You know, Vinny's got a, a, a nasty mouth. I'm like, all right, Jesus, how do I, how do I be authentic and say something without offending people? And so there's a lot of, you know, back and forth, um, with our, with our Lord, but yeah, my wife, um, she loved it. Do you have a favorite scene in the book? Yes, actually, the last chapters, there's 33 chapters. Um, so the last chapter is where Joe was invited into the USCCB for one of their meetings. And imagine being able to tell the bishops everything you want to tell them. And so uh, <laughs> so it was, like I said, it was great because all these frustrations that I've had throughout my life, I could actually have this figure. It's not me. I'm, you know, it's just a fiction. It's just a fiction, Right. So I have this fictional character saying these things to the to the bishops, and um, again, not not always critical. I mean, he's you know, there's a lot of a lot of good bishops, and uh, but he just um, you know, he's he's kind of he's kind of calling him out. He, you know, I'm not going to give you some, like some of the details <laughs> of it, but it's it's a very dramatic, um, I would say, culmination of the book. And uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, you know I've I've gotten some really great reviews. Um, thank God, you know, I just I get emails and texts and you know people every day. I just finished. I had a guy like like text me. It was like ten thirty at night because I just finished <laughs> your book, and it's like like great, you know, 
text me tomorrow. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, have, you know, and I I had a um, a Catholic book reviewer. I, I think that he did like 400 reviews last year, which is insane. It's more than one a day. Um, but he when he read it, he goes a couple of things that he said. He goes, first of all, he goes, it's like it's like reading a Jason Bourne or a Jack Reacher novel. And I thought, well, that I was like, yes, that's you know that to to be compared to that. And um, and he said, I couldn't help as I was reading the book to just really just stopping and praying. And um, and to me, that was such a great um, testimony testament that you know that again, you know, I want I want to bring the readers deeper into the heart of Christ, deep into the heart of God, and um, and that you know that's my that's my goal. And and with the second book. It's gonna get even. It's gonna even be better than the first book. So, well, you've got me curious. Um, so my thought is, I'm gonna have to get it and read it, and then send me your address. It. I'll mail. I'll mail it to you, Kiki. Just send me your address. Yeah, I I will indeed. I'll make sure Sebastian gets it to you. I would love to read it. Um, my husband would most likely also like to read it. And then when you've got the second one written, we'll do a second interview. Um, cool. That would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Is there anything you want to say about the book that you ha- that we haven't mentioned that's important to you? Um, you know, just again, I would just the, the thing um, the thing that's been the most gratifying for me um, is that um, and again, it's it's all God, it's all gift, right from God. Every even the ideas, you know, as I'm writing it in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel, again, I'm in. You know, it's like you're in the scene, right? You're right. experiencing the emotions. I'm like a little, you know, I'm like a little kid. I'm, you know, I'm just like tears coming down. I'm in the scene. I'm writing it. Um, but, you know, so my sister, like she's totally on the other side, like other side of the spectrum. The She's like super liberal, highly educated. And uh, and she goes, she goes, Steve, I'm going to read the book. And I'm like, oh, geez, I'm like, this, this should make for great, you know, Thanksgiving conversation. Oh, yeah. Um, Cause it's very, it's very hard hitting. I didn't pull any punches. You know, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't like write it thinking, Oh, what would this person say? I'm like, I just wrote it. I'm like, uh, you know, and so, the thing, you know, she, <laughs> yeah, she just, she read it and she goes, I never realized how deep and how beautiful our faith was. And she goes, and she came back to church. She wasn't going to church. She came back to church and, you know, and, you know, I've had people come up to me at conferences, you know, saying they read it. And they, you know, they came back to church and, you know, and to me, when, when somebody reaches out and says that it really touched them, I mean, it's just so, it's just so heartwarming. And I just give gratitude to God whenever I hear that, because, you know, other than like having a child, there's, there's no greater feeling than than knowing that you can maybe somehow bring somebody closer to God. You know, I mean, yeah, that's, there's no greater feeling. It's amazing. Well, I'm very happy for you. I'm happy for the people reading the book. Hopefully people listening to this interview will be uh, in- inspired to find it, get it. Where can we get it, by the way? Amazon, I assume. Well, yeah, but I actually I would recommend go to CatholicJoeSuperhero.com. So CatholicJoeSuperhero.com. And if you could buy it from us, because we just, we just make more money. Otherwise, I've been giving books away like uh, like like nothing. Um, but you know, you. if you can help, yeah, if you can help support us by buying it on our website, it really it it goes a long way. And uh, yeah, you won't you won't be disappointed. I all all I can tell you is that uh, let me let me just, let me just add this. So so women, all all you women that are listening out there, if you want your husbands to look at you differently, in a very new profound way, get them the book. Because they, it will change them. I and just my so my publicist. I, I don't know if I should mention this, but she gave it to her husband, and he <laughs> he read it, and she, she goes, he went back to confession. He went. He's practicing the faith. That you know what I mean. That uh, so it's it. I, I, I'm not taking full credit for that, but I think it was when he read the book that it really kind of struck him. And you know, like I said, it's hopefully people said it, they say that it's anointed, and you know, and. Praise God. You know, we just, I just, like I said, my whole goal is to bring people, you know, back to our father. Well, that's beautiful. It's a beautiful testimony and we thank you. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading it. And I'll awesome. be in touch with you. How All right. You end us with a prayer. Sure, sure. Um, father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. 
So we thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you for really the gift of friendships. We thank you for the gift of this technology that allows us to have these conversations. Um, And especially, Father, for that one person out there that is watching right now and listening right now, we ask you to touch their hearts and let them know how much you love them. Let them know that it's never it's it's never over, that you've always got their back and and that that good things are coming and just to hang on and trust. So we pray all this, Jesus, in your holy name, and we ask you, dear blessed mother, dear Saint Joseph, intercede for us, watch over us, and watch over our families especially. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you so much. It's been delightful. Well, stay in touch and I'm going to have you send me this book. Thank you. Oh, for sure. Yep. Thanks, Kiki. Hello, God's beloved. I'm Annabelle Mosley, author, professor of theology and host of Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. I invite you to listen in and find inspiration along this sacred journey we're traveling together to make our lives a masterpiece and, with God's grace, become saints. Join me, Annabelle Mosley, for Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. God bless you. Remember, you're never alone. God is always with you. Thank you for listening to a production of WCAT Radio. Please join us in our mission of evangelization. And don't forget, love lifts up where knowledge takes flight.